Oh, hello to everyone on the chat room today. Let's get into the smokestack. Starting off, uh, and his, like, this is the Otani of the smokestack here. This is, the, I mean, he's going 50-50. Uh, Ross Dellinger is the, the guy who leads off the smokestack with a home run more often than anybody. I mean, it's, it's like him and, and then there's everyone else uh, right now. So uh, attorneys have made a slight clarification to the House settlement terms Thursday, removing the term booster and narrowly defining it while also exempting uh, from NIL enforcement people who have given under $50,000 to a school and commercial parties like shoe companies. Will this work? I don't know. <laughs> Will this get accepted or is this thing going to go to court? I, I worry that there's enough school presidents that now want this thing to go to court because they foolishly have it in their heads that they are going to be able to control where people get money from. Yeah, and that's not going to happen at all. You can't control that. that yeah. That's just illegal. <laughs> the only thing you control me can control me from getting money from is illegally like stolen money or products that are illegal to sell. Like, I can't get money from selling heroin. Like, I can't do that. That If I do, then that's illegal. But if somebody wants to give me money for any other reason within the bounds of legality, then they can. I can give you money, and we can fill out a tax form and everything for you to just take a picture with me and say, like, this is, you know, Paul Catalina, the official podcast host of Post Toasties. Like, that's it. Like, if that's all that you want to give me money for, if it's in the contract, it's in the contract, that's America, man. I mean, that's just how it works. So the school president's thinking that because there's some other things at play here, they want to keep it as close to the old way as they can. If they wind up in court, it's going to bankrupt some of them. And it's a bad decision. It's a bad decision. Get the settlement done. Get the settlement done. Uh, moving on more on this, uh, Charlie Baker, uh, who, as you know, is the president of the NCAA, uh, we continue to see evidence of dysfunction in today's NIL environment, including examples of promises made but not kept to student athletes. Obviously, Matthew Sluka, big story this week, and we have a, a nice little nugget on that. Just as anyone that owns stock or buys a house is afforded basic consumer protections, it's clear that student athletes entering NIL contracts should be too. Uh, and they have an nilassist.nca.org. Um, and but they they continue advocating for Congress to create national NIL guidelines that will protect student athletes from exploitation, including the use of standard contracts. Yes. Like, this is what Congress needs to do. The Congress's job is to set regulations on things or to peel regulations back when they don't work or overstep. Um, but I've told the audience on our show this a million times. America is not good at regulating things. We're either too much or not enough. It's either absolute chaos or total restriction. There's really not a lot of places that live in a nice middle ground of this is fair for everyone. It, it's not. I mean, there are, I'm sure. But, um, you know, just just read about some of the things we allow in healthcare. And, and Oh, tell, I worked in it. I yeah, know. And tell me we're regulating things well. Go to, you know what? Go to a middle to lower end senior citizen care facility. And tell me that we're regulating that. Or go to some place, you know, on the left coast and say, hey, I would like to build a solar panel because you guys want me to. And then find out how long it's going to take you to do something they want you to do. Like, again, we're either completely underregulated or completely overregulated. And asking this particular Congress to do anything that makes the first lick of sense. I mean, you might you, like, honestly, you might as well ask, a, you know, a cat to drive a truck. It's just not going to happen. Like, come on, Mr. Tibbles up here. Like that's what's going on. Um, the Las Vegas review journal, a representative for Circa CEO Derek Stevens contacted UNLV with an offer to pay quarterback Matthew Sluka the hundred thousand dollars. He said the university owed him. Uh, this is problematic <laughs> in that I don't think he, like, he can say that, 
But I don't think he can legally – like, this is one of those things that's restricted. Uh, I think casinos can't do NIL. But how are we to but the point – But maybe he can give his personal money, but, like, even still. Like, we're – could you ever think we're to the point where gambling is legal, and not only is it legal, you're having a – gambling service looking to pay a player nil money he was supposedly owed that we don't even know if he was legitimately owed this yeah yeah and the person who brokered it, this deal supposedly isn't even allowed to do business in the state this is a hell of a story yeah this story it just keeps getting weirder and weirder and weirder i mean weird all the way around but you know look here's the deal um circa is the world's largest sports book which presents a huge conflict of interest here when you talk yep. about giving money to college athletes. Um, but uh, if Derek Stevens, you're watching, we would love to come to a show at Circa. We wanted to do Absolutely. one. We were there. We would love to do it. We have no conflict of interest. None at all. Uh, but I like, and I get it. Like um, I think what Derek Stevens is doing, and this is me seeing the rosier side of it. What he is doing is saying like, yes, UNLV, there's avenues for you to go down that you haven't gone down yet. And, and maybe, you know, trying to facilitate more of those. I don't know if he's probably necessarily allowed to, or if he did, it would be one of those things is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I mean, that's like, going to open up like, Pandora's box even more. Yeah, like the thing is, is that Derek Stevens is not going to pay a kid to shave points. or th Like, he doesn't benefit from that. That only makes him look bad, you know, right? Um, but uh, what it does is, is that, like, if they let him do it, then how many people are going to be like, oh, well, if, if Circa gave money, then, you know, Bill's Casino can certainly <laughs> – Bill's Casino and Sportsbook in Secaucus, New Jersey, I'm happy to take their money too. You know, like those – and, and then you have, like, the whole Dave Portnoy coming out saying he's going to pay for Michigan to get quarterback. Like, it's a weird time right now, man. Well, you know, he's not uh, with any casinos anymore. Uh, okay. Yeah, but yeah, still, yeah, yeah. that's – I mean, he couldn't dude. Get, they wouldn't license him. I don't that's doubt why, it. That's why he did the thing. They wouldn't license him. Um, I Mostly because, like, uh, he has such a, a loud, like, stance. Yeah. So, um, it's – I think that's why they're like, look, we don't want him to be, like, out here complaining about things and, right. and all that or, or doing what he does. But Portnoy making sure Michigan gets a quarterback, I have no problem with. Like, that's <laughs> – yeah, here's the thing. Um, I promise you, if you gave most crazy sports fans like Dave Portnoy the kind of money that Dave Portnoy has, they would do the same thing. They would. I would agree. I would agree with that. I mean, like, and, the, and they're already doing it. There's lots of people doing it. There are people at every university in NIL. I mean, look at Texas Tech. Who's yeah? Whose whole like their whole like their I want to say their whole personality is wrapped up in it. But their favorite thing in the world is the their alma mater sports. That's I mean, I'm one of those people. It's yeah. one of my favorite things in the world. I just don't have millions of dollars on hand to where I can go like, you know what? Go get him. Like, you know, fly me out. I'll talk to Cam Ward. He won't go to Miami. I'm cooler than Rick Ross. I'm this much cooler. I'm 500K cooler than Rick Ross. What is Rick Ross giving you? I'll double it. I'll double it. <laughs> I, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. So I know that like, yeah. So you know what? Dave Portnoy wants to go out and help get a quarterback. Hell, I'm all for it. I'm fine. I'm fine. Let's get people paid. I'm all for getting people paid as long as it's on the up and up, as long as they do, you know, perform to the level that they, they should and put forth effort. Hey, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Realignment news. This is from Pete Thamel. Texas State has emerged as a target for the Mountain West, which would be an all-sports addition. One other target that could soon be coming to focus for the Mountain West is Northern Illinois, which would be as a football-only member. Then next, Bergota McMurphy – Brett McMurphy, the Mountain West notifies the MAC of its interest in NIU and Toledo as football-only members in 2026. Uh, this adds the central time zone to the Mountain West, potentially increasing future media rights value. NIU and Toledo have combined for seven of the last 13 MAC titles. Mountain West currently has seven football members, but would still need two full two full-time members in addition to NIU and Toledo. And the MAC has lived in this zone until now, until this Pac-12 Mountain West thing. The Mac has lived in this zone of, I'm sure there's a little bit of like, why does nobody want us? And then a little bit of like, I'm glad that we're not involved in this. We can just continue to be the Mac and have Mac shit on Wednesday nights and all of those things. 
But now, the fickle finger of realignment has has come, has pointed its direct it, its it, its way towards the MAC, and now NIU and Toledo are of interest to the Mountain West. Which, okay, you know, like they're good teams in that in that league. Look, NIU just had a huge win. That, that's what I was saying. Huge is like, win. like how much of that win spurred them looking in that direction? Because yeah. like the Mac was never on anybody's radar in this. And then now all yeah. of a sudden, you know, NIU's top of the, the ranks and you got Toledo there. And I mean, I guess it would make some sense, but just leave the Mac alone. Just leave these yeah. damn conferences alone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know. Just not. Hey, listen, listen, I'm going to say, it. I'm going to say it right in. I might get up and walk to the – if I had a mic on, I'd get up and walk to the camera. Get real close. Pack Mountain West. Just merge. Just merge. Get over yourself. You know, oh, the bottom teams in the Mountain West are not good enough for Everybody's us. Everybody's got bottom teams. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Who do you think you are right now? You got left. You were the bottom. Like, that was you before. Now just be like uh, – Oregon State and Washington State, I want so badly to be on your side on this. In Mountain West, I want so badly to be on your side on this. I really like Gloria Navarez a lot. Yeah, she's awesome. O- honestly, if I could have a vote for president of college football, like Gloria Navarez she's would be there. on my ticket. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you had like a president and vice president, give me, you know, Yavar- Navarez your mark 2026. You know, <laughs> in charge of some things, I, I would I would enjoy that. Um, I think they're they're get it done, get it done, no nonsense uh, people, um, and uh, and they understand the modern landscape. Yeah, and de- new ways of finding money. Yeah, 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 and um, you know, they're not Greg Sankey, so that's <laughs> that's good. Because uh, right now he's like the overlord of things, the Legion of Doom he's got going there, but. Let's just let's just work this all out. Let's just work it out. You guys come together, and then when you come together, you can start stealing other people's teams like a family. That's what you should do. You should steal as a family. You know who doesn't lo- love a good family weekend out uh, for a casino heist? I think it's good. Family of six. Seems you know, legit. What are you What are you gonna do? You can go to the water park. You can go apple picking, or you can knock over a casino. I think. Knocking over a casino or stealing teams out of another conference. Good, fun family activity. So, uh, here is um, this news comes one week after uh, Daniel and Jennifer Golden um, of the Smoke Clan uh, went to a Nebraska game. I do not think these two issues don't have some correlation. Nope, definitely tied together. Uh, and I speak this specifically to Daniel and Jennifer. And Emery, please clip this exact moment, like starting in this segment, uh, so I can send it to them so they know that one week after they attended their first Nebraska game, the Nebraska Board of Regents saw a financial opportunity missed and has now uh, set to approve alcohol s- sales at athletic events. So Nebraska will be selling alcohol at athletic events. It comes right after Daniel and Jennifer. Believe me, I was at their wedding. I know how they roll. Uh, how Daniel and Jennifer, like, that's a week. That comes one week after. Not a coincidence. Not a coincidence that this happens right after because they missed a huge financial opportunity. I think after They left money on the table. They did, and after learning about a runza and what it is, I don't know how they've gone so long without pairing a runza up with a cold beer. That makes no sense at all. They've been missing out. Well, here's the thing. I think the runza is the post-tailgate yes. food. Yes. It's the post-tailgate <laughs> food, but if you have if you've maybe, if you have self-control and you're not like most of the students who, you know, because you can't have beer in the stadium, you know, slam like nine of them right before they go in, and you need a runza, otherwise you're not going to make yeah, it. sober up a bit. Then what you can do now is you can, like, you know, you can pair it. Like, that could be the number one combo. Absolutely, like, it's going to be. Like, give me a number one would be a runza and a bush light at. Dude, it's over. <laughs> at, at the Memorial Stadium, that's the number one combo. Yes. Yeah, just walk up to a thing, go, I'll have the number one. Like, okay, do you want the, you know, 16, 32, or, or the, you know, the full corn husk 
you know, like <laughs> yeah, put it in a big husk, like a, a beer, big, like, corn, yes. like corn, or like you drink <laughs> out of the mask, like you know, the mascot with the overalls, like you drink out of his head or something. Like there you go. These ideas are all free, Nebraska, all free right now. The fourth idea that comes with a cost, so not uh, not a surprise. Jake Trotter, if Navy beats UAB tomorrow, Army and Navy will be be off, both of them, to 4-0 starts for the first time since 1945. And Navy, Navy and are both good. They're both good. This is a good cycle for them. And, I like, let's keep pushing. I want that Army-Navy game to be about, like, I would love to see it, especially after the conference title game. Yes. <laughs> What if it was the conference title game and, and then they, they had to play it, it again? Up. Yes. <laughs> love it. Let's that would do be it. awesome. <laughs> let's do it. No. Back-to-back Army-Navy games. No, I would love to see this game be, you know, I, I like I'm not crazy enough to think they're both going to be 10-2 and two at, at any point, but if this is like an 8-4 and four versus a 9-3 and three team or, you know, two teams that are, are pretty darn good, like ah, that it makes that game – the game's always good. Like – Two and two and nine versus two and nine is still a good game, but if you got two really good teams at the same time, oh, it's like another level. Like you said, first time since 1945. Usually, they're not good at the same time. They're just not. Like I don't know what it is. Like one school gets a corner on all the the better football players. Like oh well, now they they want to be on ships. Now they want to jump out of airplanes. Like I, I don't know, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, throughout the time, uh, the Big Twelve Conference. Looking good, Arrowhead. Thanks for the hospitality, Chiefs. And the Big 12 logos on the field. You see Kansas football there on the sideline. So whatever their issues are with the contract, at least for now, it appears that everything's fine. Like, they didn't seem too alarmed with it, but it was odd to not have a signed contract 72 hours before the game. So yeah, That was my I, thing. Like, you knew they were probably going to make it work. Like, it, yeah, there was no point in not making it work. But the fact that you went into this without a signed contract is a little sketchy. I just, just would not weird. do that. It's, it's not just, good business practice. It, no, it's just weird. It's just weird. Okay. Um, uh, from on through, well, this is from BetMGM, but they didn't have a, um, a tweet about it. But from BetMGM, Alabama versus Georgia betting lines have drastically shifted with the Tide becoming the favorite to win now. I picked the Tide. Garrett, did you pick Alabama? Yeah, I picked Alabama. You picked Alabama. I'm not sure what Smokey and Craig did, but we'll find out uh, after the week. Uh, we are supposed to have Evan Abrams from Action Network on today to go through some of those betting things. Uh, he is in Florida right now, and he's got flight drama, uh, even though he's in the southeast part of Florida, and this is not where it's going, but – you know, hurricane days in Florida, if you've been down there, it's chaos from Pensacola to Miami. It's just everything's harder, and our thoughts are certainly with everybody throughout the southeast, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, the Carolinas, Kentucky that are getting just dumped on by Helene, uh, and uh, certainly thinking about them today, um, uh, particularly, you know, a bunch of my, 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 my fellow Tallahassians uh, who, who they've never had a direct hit like right. that. Like, so it's, it, it's going to be a lot, and uh, just thinking about those people. Uh, college football home, these are winless teams against the spread this year. I'm going to start listing off, and Garrett, you tell me, surprised or not surprised? Okay. TCU. Mm, not really surprised. LSU. Honestly, kind of not really surprised. Yeah. <laughs> They're not very good, yeah. man. Middle Tennessee. Eh. NC State. Kansas, Kansas a little bit. Yeah. Kansas is the first one that's kind of got me surprised. Yeah, um, and that's the last one on the list that I'm not really surprised. Like, Arizona, Arizona, oh Arizona, zero and three against the spread. Surprised? I am. I yeah. thought they would be better. I mean, I mean, I knew they would be, take a step back with everything that's gone on there, but the major fall off with that team has been just significant to me. All right, undefeated against the spread. BYU, huge surprise. Very much. Ole Miss, no. not a surprise. Army, yep. surprised. Pitt, surprised. San Jose State, surprised. Yep. Eastern Michigan. Yep. Yeah. Tennessee, Texas, no, not no. a surprise. UNLV, eh. a little bit. Louisville, to me, not a surprise. 
UCF, uh, to really. me, not really, because I thought they were going to be good. Bowling Green, a surprise. Marshall, a surprise. And with a tie, Illinois at 3 0 1, and Boston College. Both of them. At 3 0 1. So both of those are surprises yep. in how well they played. Because uh, Castellanos is out this weekend, too. He's going to miss the game, uh, BC's quarterback, uh, coming up this weekend as well. From Greg Rubel. No, those are for oh, the, the show tomorrow. Those are for the show tomorrow? Yeah, that's smoky stuff. Okay, I'm still going to read this. Go ahead. Sataki era BYU is 22 and seven when playing as a ranked team. Aranda era Baylor five and 13 versus AP top 25 teams, including 38, 24 win over number 19 BYU at McLean stadium in 2021. Baylor on a nine game losing streak versus ranked teams. First L in the street came at BYU in 2022, the Ooh. revenge game. When we come back, Josh neighbors, big 12 watch. This is 365 sports.